Okay. Okay. Today I want to share with you guys how to use the blur filter in Photoshop. Some of the blur settings, there's, there are a lot of blur settings in Photoshop that you can use. And I'm going to show how I kind of learned, how I've learned um, how to use the blur and just some general tips on making it look realistic if you want it to look realistic or if you want it to look um, like a kind of like a fantasy or whatever. Um, just to do that in Photoshop. So we have some images open right now of a shoot that I did a while ago. And as you can see, it's um, this photo, for example, is pretty blurry. So depending on like what camera you use, this might not be your like first result. Um, but I wanted to mention some things before we like actually go into the blur. And I'll try and section this off so that you can see. Um, also try and section this off so that you can see um, different filters and what they do. So starting off here, let me just get my brush tool here and create a new layer. Um, so I have this photograph and let's say you have this photograph too. So I'm going to, so, so looking at this photo right here, it's pretty close up and the, the wall back here, um, is not that far away from her. So um, that's just something to keep in mind when you end up blurring because when you blur something that's like close like this um, Generally 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 there's not going to be any depth for you to blur a lot a lot of this background um, especially with things like um, Walls like this so it's it's better to go light on walls as far as like walls This is a wall. This is a wall. This is like further back. This is like a couple more feet um, but that's just something to keep in mind um, and yeah so we're just gonna do a basic selection um, it might take a little bit to do this selection because I know um, there's a lot going on here but we're not gonna go too much into the selection tool but we're gonna go press W which is the selection tool and go I'm gonna that. perfect and then get this so her hair, there, there's a different selection tutorial that I could make on here, but we're not going to worry too much about it in this video. Um, and do a selection like that. Okay. Everything looks good. There's a little bit on the side. Let's get her hand real quick. Okay. So let's say you have your selection now, and that's bugging me right there. So as you like get to do this, I'm using the zoom tool, by the way to get in here and just get a selection. Okay, awesome. Command zero to get out of that. And I'm gonna create a new layer before. And I'm gonna go and select this and duplicate it so that we can put a mask. So this is like the best way that I found to do it. Um, this is like the best way that I found to do it is using masks to help out um, selecting so that I can go back in and I can select it later if I need to. Um, command zero and we're gonna go and select mask. And so nothing really changed. So we're gonna go down to the bottom one here and go up here to filter and blur. So blur, there's either blur or blur, blur gallery. Uh, blur is a lot I usually stick with the lens or the Gaussian blur. Um, some of these other ones are really good too, uh, depending on what kind of effect you want. I think Smart Blur is also a really good one. Um, shape Blur isn't my favorite just because it, it creates weird shapes that you're not able to edit. Um, and then there's Blur Gallery, which has a lot, a lot of advanced, like the program does a lot of the effects for you, but um, it depending on like your computer it it may be difficult to load um and take a little bit so we're just going to go gaussian blur just to show you guys what what gaussian blur is so it creates this nice effect so if you look in here we got this nice gaussian blur um and what i would actually do after this is probably create a gradient on this but let's say so gaussian blur we got 23.5 um, pixels. So if we go down to zero, watch watch the histogram up here. Okay, the histogram goes like that from that area to something more on the um, right side, which means that it's a brighter image, which means it's going to be a brighter image. Um, so something like this would not. I mean, you could do something like that, surely, 
Um, but it isn't going to look realistic if that's what you're going for. If you're not going for that, then this is perfect. Um, you might want to bring it up and then work more on the uh, mask that you worked on and try and like feather it out. Um, but we're going to go and go maybe something like 18. Yeah, 18 looks really good. So we're going to press OK. And this is the preview button. You can also see the before and after if you just drag in here as well. Stuck at home? Make the most of the internet with NordVPN. As you're trying out new apps to save you from boredom, NordVPN will make sure that your data is always protected. And you can still travel, well, virtually, by connecting to VPN servers in almost 60 countries. Up for a new gaming challenge? Make sure that cyber threats don't get in your way. Feeling curious? Access the news from all over the world firsthand. Get the app now. NordVPN. Online security starts with a click. Uh, so there is a lot blur going on here. Um, we're going to press OK. OK, so now we have that. Um, you could use a smart object on this, but for this, I'm not going to. Um, now I'm going to go into mask, and this is where it might get a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go and press Alt and bring that all the way down. This is the original background. So we got the background, which is the mask, masked person. Um, and then, so if I remove that, it's all blurry. This one's the blur background. And then this is the um, original background. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go in here in this blur. So as you can see right here, there's more of an endpoint. So I'm gonna make a gradient. And why would I make a gradient? Well, I'm doing that so that it kind of co it it goes into the image. So let me see. So it looks more natural where her hands are and where um, this is. And what I did there is I pressed the gradient tool and then I pressed um, the gradient editor and I got a black and white um, color. Let me see if I can do that because I think there was some green in there. So something like that. And so if I go before and after, I press Alt here. This is kind of like show only, show this layer only, you you see you see a little bit of blur. Um, and I prefer subtle blurs over like bigger blurs, but we'll get to another bigger blur um, after this. But that that is the Gaussian blur. So um, what we can do is go file, export. And somebody asked me in the last video, how do you save it? So I go export, save as, or save for web. That's, that's my favorite way to do it. You can also press control. Um, S as well and just wait for this to load All right. okay and then I'm gonna go to JPEG I usually prefer J JPEG because they're a little bit smaller file sizes and then um, image size and then you just save it as um, blur And there you go. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So on to the next image, we're going to work on some of the other filter galleries and I'll show you exactly like what you can do with some of them. So it's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to go and just duplicate this and then press uh, W on my keyboard and highlight over her. And I chose this one because now the background is a lot farther away so that we can like kind of manipulate the background even more. So let me get, get her hair real quick. Um, this strand right here. Okay, and then press mask. Okay, go down here. Now what I'm gonna do instead is go into right click on the background and then go to convert to smart object. I mentioned this in the previous video of using smart objects. So that's what we're gonna do in this one. Um, press V and then filter blur. Okay, so we got field blur, iris blur, tilt shift, path blur, and spin blur. So let's go with the iris, uh, let's go with the field blur. So um, it brings up this menu and it's likely gonna put the, um, the blur right in the middle. So that means that this, the middle is gonna be like the most focused area, um, which shouldn't be a problem because we already, we already 
to find our mask on top of this layer. So field blur, you can look up here, it says blur and then the amount and you can spin it or you can either um, enhance this. Um, now you're gonna see some ghosting effects right here. And the way that you can avoid this right here, this little part right here, is to either make the mask bigger um, to avoid that or make the blur smaller. So let's see. So before and after, a little bit of a difference, not too much. Um, but what you can actually do with this is you can add bokeh. So this is bokeh is the stuff in the background like this, the blurry parts. Um, and just change it up. So that that is field blur. And as you can see it, you can just, and then you can add, I believe you can add extra ones on here too. Yeah, different areas get different amounts of blur. Um, and you can do it that way. So I'm gonna press cancel there. And we're gonna try again. And we're gonna go blur, blur gallery, and we're gonna go iris blur this time. So iris blur is completely different. Look at this, it's an oval and you got these different, um, these different points. And this is basically your feather. So feathering is like a subtle gradient. So if I bring this all the way up, okay, and then bring this down, you'll see that the feathering increases as we go closer towards the middle. If we go further out, um, it, there's a very hard um, difference between the blur area and the actual area. So let me go down here and do that. And you get something cool like that. I actually really like that. Um, I scratched this to a full, so I exit out of that. Exit all that, okay. So we're gonna go filter, blur, and what you just saw there, um, scratch the full means that my hard drive is full for that. So hopefully we can redo that, but I'm not sure. Okay. Okay, so, so that worked. Um, and then we got this cool photo. So I think that's pretty cool, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to clear the smart filter and try another blur. Um, and I would really recommend trying out these blurs because they're, they can be really, really good. Um, let's make this actually a rasterized image real quick. Blur, let's go into lens blur. Lens blur is one of my favorite blurs um, and it gives you a whole bunch of settings. So down here you have fast, accurate. Um, and so right away that means that um, the preview, as far as the preview goes, um, there's a slight difference in what the actual appearance looks like. Um, and since this is a rendering, basically, it's not on the image yet, it's going to take a lot of commu computing power to do the um, more accurate type, uh, but faster will do as well. Uh, so let's go down iris. You have different, so iris, it has triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon. So. And then it tells you how many numbers, how many like sides um, it's gonna have. So if we go all the way up to octagon, um, the blur is gonna have a different effect. It's going to look more like a octagon. And if we go down to triangle, it's gonna give you a different effect as well. Um, depending on your photo, it may be more visible. So we're gonna go hexagon, which is usually like around what most cameras are, and you have these other options like radius, um, blade curvature, rotation. So if we change the rotation a little bit, can't really see much. Uh, if you, we bring up the radius though, bring down curvature, um, you can like fine tune exactly what, what you wanna see. And this is only on the background as well. So it's not going on top of the other layer. Brightness. Okay. 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 So we did lens blur. We did. Okay. We did lens blur. Okay. We did lens blur, Gaussian blur, and we did some of the field and the iris blur. Um, some more blurs that are more like artistic include like the motion blur. So say we wanted it to, it to look like she was moving. Um, we could do that here. So we got the angle. This is angle like directly this way. So 
if I change the distance to a little bit more, you'll notice that um, this, it goes in that direction and I'll show you. So that's like an extreme point and then this is a lower point, lower point where you can kind of see it. Um, you can also change the rotation. Um, I like putting it towards where the subject is looking. Um, this is also good if you are using something that with motion. Um, so you can make this effective motion using that. <clears throat> okay, another blur, let's go to smart blur. Smart blur is another really good one. Um, go out a little bit. And so smart blur is very smart because it allows you to choose um, Zoom in here. Filter, blur. Okay, radio blur. So radio blur is another blur that you can use. Um, it's one of the more like artistic blurs. So you have blur. Let's bring it up so that you can actually see what's going on. Um, oh, there's not a preview on this one. So we're going to go 50, like around 50, um, and go best quality. And you're going to see this whole area around here turn into a radial blur. So it's kind of like the iris blur, but there's a lot less like um, ability to uh, use the feathering as well on this. So you can use the feathering in like a mask or something, but um, yeah, it's just going to appear different. You're going to notice it. Okay, so so like this is a lot going on right here. Um, but as you can see, it goes out in the middle. If we hide that layer, you'll see that um, it just goes directly in the middle. And it's not so much, it goes kind of around circular. So um, it's a little bit like the iris blur, but very, a lot more, a lot more. Um, there's also zoom, which kind of does like a pinch effect into like that, the middle area. And if you noticed on the last screen, there was also an area where you could select um, where you want the middle part to be. So if your subject isn't in the middle like that, you can also select where you want it to be. Um, and as you can see, it kind of has that like look forward, look forward kind of uh, feel. Um, so, so that was kind of like the guide to all of the blurs in Photoshop. I know I didn't go through all of them, but um, some of the other ones are really similar and they have just minor settings, but those are some of my favorites that I like to use. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you, you learned something. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video.